Hi Yarn Gang, Nikki from Bunny Craft Socks with here and welcome to another Dive With Me video. Um, I shot the video of dyeing the yarn before uh, I did this intro so I actually know what happens and so what you're about to see is most certainly not what I had in mind. Um, this video is a bit of a fail um, but more than anything it's actually a learning experience. So you will get to see a little bit of what you probably shouldn't do and that is be afraid. Don't be afraid to go big, go bold, uh, which is what I didn't do. And you will see the result. Also, can we just talk about my sleeves? Look at my sleeves, they're big and puffy. I think we're gonna have to talk about this jumper at a, a yarn chat video. Um, this is Tunisian crochet, it's not knit. But anyway, before I uh, ramble on, as I tend to, um, here is a Die, Die With Me video. Um, I think in the video I explain what I want to do and um, yeah, enjoy. And I'll see you at the end to show you the result. Hello Yarny Gun, how are you? We going to be dyeing a what I hope is going to be a really funky colour today um colour way even um I've got my yarn already in the pan and it's already heating we have two skeins in here we have a 75% 20 um, merino 25% nylon sock um, base on here and then a DK version of the same yarn. And I wanted to dye the two different weights, uh, weights of yarn, just to see how they will absorb it differently. It's pretty low immersion. Um, the yarn was pre-soaked in just normal tap water with four tablespoons of vinegar. And then I put it in here with a little bit of the pre-soak. You can see it's actually quite low immersion. It's still, still not... Mm, it's hitting up all right um and what are we going to do so i have pre-mixed some dharma acid dye i have purple pop um fluorescent safety orange fluorescent yellow and then oh knocking the camera i'm sorry um because i don't have a fluorescent blue and I don't actually have a bright blue from either my Dharma or Descartes. I have mixed a 100ml of water with 10 drops of the Wilton um, Colour Right System Blue. So this bad boy. And you can see it's a really, really nice blue. And then I don't actually have a fluorescent green either. Every time I try and go get one from, from Dharma, um, I think it's called Radioactive. They also have this sour apple, which can be quite a nice colour with fluorescent. So I don't have that because it's always, always sold out when I go for it. So I mixed 100ml of the fluorescent yellow with 5ml of the blue. And you get this sort of greeny colour. And we're also going to get a bit green when we mix in when we mix in the colour on the yarn because what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to take this and I'm going to start just drawing zigzags all the way through. Um, we'll then, when we're satisfied, we're going to uh, leave it for about 5-10 minutes to try and get the colour to absorb as much as possible, especially the purple pop. I am so nervous about using this colour in this yarn. I... We'll show you in the end, I've made a few mistakes where I've not given the purple pop a chance to absorb properly in another colourway. And then when I flipped it, it just spread everywhere and then it covered the whole colourway. And then it's just this sort of purpley pink fluorescent thing. I'll show you at the end of the video what the <laughs> mistaken skein looks like. I'm sorry, I'm jangling with my um, measuring spoons. So... We'll do that, we'll flip the yarn as many times as we need to get as much coverage as possible. I kind of want a bit of a fluorescent rainbow, I guess. Once we're done with that, we're going to leave the yarn to set. We might add a bit more vinegar, add a bit more water if I dare. Um, 
I have to admit as well, I added two more tablespoons of vinegar in here along with the four tablespoons that are already in the pre-soak because I want to try and seal this purple pop. So anyway, we're going to dye this and then we're going to let it cool completely. After which we're going to twist it back in a skein while it's still wet and dunk it in a pot of Jacquard Jet Black. And it's almost like a tie dye where um, where there are resistance points, we should have this colorway stay and, and have it be bright and beautiful. And then some of the black should cover it completely. And in other areas where there is some resistance, but not a lot, you should get a muted version of the fluorescent rainbow. So let's get going. I'm going to start with the purple pop because I just want to go a bit easy with it. Um, and now, do you know what? I'm going to start with blue because that's another colour that can be quite bright. So let's go la 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 la. Bit of blue. And I think I'm just going to use my favourite technique where, you know, just tap it out a little bit. Um, just yeah do you know what because there's quite a bit of acid actually um is it absorbing in the end yeah it's quite it's absorbing quite quickly but i'm still going to do a bit of tap 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 um i'm gonna put a little bit more blue here i'm gonna put a bit here because yeah it's these bottles leak look at that just look at that this is coming out of the joint because they are just so cheap and you can't get anything decent i have to wonder what restaurants do do they get loads of sauces and oil everywhere anyway so we have got a bit of blue I'm going to zigzag with some of the yellow which is also quite bright and as i guessed it is mixing and making some green already which is nice oh i kind of like this it looks good in the camera and then I'm just going to, I might as well go, I'm going to go this way and zigzag some of the orange. Um, I've done the orange quite pastel, I'm not going to lie, because the safety orange, I'm just going mad now, um, it's quite bright. And you can see, well, it's a bit washed out actually on the camera. I wonder if I turn this off whether you can see it. Nope, it just makes it hard to see. It's quite bright here already. I'm going to just sort of zigzag. And yeah, where I've put that blue and yellow where they've mixed, it is quite um quite green. I'm gonna try this green and see how that goes and go this way. It's just kind of a yellowy green. I'm kind of lighting that. I think I might need to put a bit more blue here and there. But let's see how it goes with it. I keep knocking the camera over. I'm so sorry. Let's get some of the purple pop. So, oh, okay. That is that is bright. It is dripping everywhere. But I kind of like the drip effect that the bottle's given me. I'm going to leave it there. Oh, no. I'm going to put some by the ties. I keep forgetting, like, where the... The ties aren't, yeah. So it looks even brighter on camera than it does here, but it is also quite an overcast afternoon as well. So it's probably true on camera than it is on uh, in person. I'm going to just sort of drip a bit of blue. It is dripping everywhere. And drip, 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 drip. Back in the middle edge. Drip, drip, drip. So because we are low immersion, um, where the yarn is not in any water, like in the edge here, you've you you get like quite distinct colours, and then in the middle, it's mixing quite. Um, interestingly and I absolutely love this corner here um, it's really bright and awesome and I yeah I love it I'm, I'm going brave I'm gonna put a bit more purple pop in here you know 
I mean a bit more I literally just mixed like the tip of a teaspoon of a teaspoon I don't even think there's like a quarter of a gram of dye in here um because I was quite worried about what this is going to turn out uh, to be like so yeah I'm going to yeah I think I'm going to pause the video and if you can see here what well, there's let's get some yarn to be covered uh, I'm just gonna see how it is absorbing I mean obviously the purple pop is still very much yeah that's kind of the only color that seems to be yeah interesting very interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. There's, there's quite a bit of yellow actually. Um, I think yellow is also quite quite hard to to um takes a little while to absorb. I need to stop poking this. I can't help myself. I'm so sorry. Okay, we're going to leave this. So I'm going to pause the video because uh, my phone only has so much memory and we're going to give this five minutes um so i'll be right back to flip the yarn over and do this on the other side right and we're back and let's flip this over and get my thought tongs so that i don't burn myself I had the yarn actually, let me just try and spread it open a bit here. Um, I had it covered with a bit of foil because I don't have a lid for this pan. I don't have a lid for any of my pans apart from like my pasta pot, um, which I use the as a steamer. So, oh, I like all the greens that are coming through, but I do like green. I mean, my surname is actually green, so you know. Let's spread the yarn a bit more, especially with this one. I have a feeling we might be flipping a few more times. Um, like I wouldn't, I, I don't mind having a bit of white, but I don't want there to be too much white. So I think what I'm going to start with actually is, I'm going to try and do, hmm, that's not really orange. A bit of orange, a bit more orange. And I think I'm going to actually do the little twirly twirlies um, rather than the zigzags. So twirly twirly, technical term that one, twirly twirly. And then we're going to go in with the blue again. Twirly twirly with the blue, Ooh, a bit more gentle though with the blue, it's quite some. It's going to be quite a blue yarn, isn't it? And let's do some yellow. I'm not going to put any of the um, flor well, it's not really fluorescent of the, of the mix that I got. Um, I'm going to put a little bit. I don't think it makes that much of a difference really but at least I know I've put a little bit so we're consistent and then do some purple pop so the purple pop I can't twirly twirly very well because it just drips so purple pop is a drip drip um, being a bit more brave with the purple pop because it seems to be taking right and more here on the side there's you can't see it because of the way that the yarn is positioned in the camera and i can't get it because the phone gets steamy for bring it closer there's a bit of blue that's sort of not there here so i'm just gonna do some blue drips here and there Bit more 
orange actually. I quite like that. I like orange. I know that's um it's one of those sort of marmite colours. You love it or you hate it. Um or yeah, not too bothered by it, I guess, is your other option. Oh, healing. I'm probably talking a bit too quietly and I'm going to end up having to do a voiceover for this. Um because I don't have a mic that plugs into into the phone that I can walk around with. Um, do I want a more purple pop? I might do just a bit more. Just to kind of help counteract some of that blue. And also I'm actually, I love this colour, I'm just really scared of it. Okay. We're going to leave this because if I keep adding, it's just going to get muddy now. Um, and we'll probably flip the yarn one more time just to just to see if there's any white that we want to cover. And it's just going to be um, just to see. Yeah, just just balance the colours out a little bit. Um, it's interesting that there's bits of the blue, but most of it has now become green because of the yellow. I actually quite kind of like that. But maybe we'll find some white patches to put some blue in, like here in the corner. We'll put more blue, and there in the corner we'll put a bit more blue. And Ooh. there we go. I'm done playing. I promise. Cool. I will be back with you shortly. All right, let's see what's happened. I think it's mostly okay. Oh yeah, that's all, that's all good. Can't believe that Purple Pop is behaving. Um, let's just have a look at the yarn. Just move it around. Um, just want a bit more color. I'm just going to put a bit more purple pop on this side, it's nice and bright. Um, so I'm going to do the same on this side actually. Um, just uncover, oh there's a bit of, oh there's a bit of white, I didn't see a bit of white. So seeing as how I'm going in with purple pop, I've decided that's going to be the colour I'm going to definitely use out. It's just, of a few of those on here. It's a messy rainbow. I am very much sort of I'm very much learning on how to do these more variegated colorways. Um I do I do a lot of tonals um or just sort of speckled colorways. Speckles are fun. Um but you know, the, using the liquid dyes like this is definitely outside of my comfort zone. And this is why I thought, you know, I'll come and come and do something like this. I'm literally just sort of spot, spot dyeing, which is probably not the most efficient way. Probably wouldn't be doing this if you're sort of trying to reproduce this on a mass scale but we're not trying to reproduce this on a mass scale i i don't think this is going to be like a colorway that you'll be able to get in my shop i this is just going to be a one-off and then if i like the way that it looks i might try and see if i can do it with just stripes um or or you know just sort of maybe paint it over the counter um rather than just doing it like this because you can see like the, you're getting a lot of mixing of the colors so you're getting lots of different tones of the colors as well but it would just be so hard to be so hard to reproduce you know which is fine again I'm just sort of dropping a bit of color here and there I'd love to I'd love to use up this bottle I 
do want to move this now until it's a bit more set. I might, yeah. There we go. God, this is just dripping everywhere. very very sort of blue greeny teal moment happening over here which I'm quite enjoying oh see there's just sort of opening up the yarn and just using up the colors um, and now I've got to do it up here by the yeah by the prize because it's really easy to miss areas like that. Uh, I will get some of the other colours. I just really I wanted to see how much of this I can get rid of. I'd love to see what this look, would look like just dry, but I don't. Well, we'll get to see what some of it looks like just dry anyway. I'm just going to give this a minute. Um, there's quite a lot of acid in the iron, so the colours are actually absorbing quite quickly. As, well, because when I tap them, they don't seem to be spreading too much. Or maybe I'm just. No, I'm lying. I can see the water turning purple here. Cool. Right, let's give this a moment. blue there so we have just blue there a bit more blue a little bit more blue down here a little bit more blue here and there Okay, I'm, I'm literally just playing around now because that's kind of what I want to do. <laughs> I never I never come into these thinking, oh, I know what, I'm going to make colour one. It's absolutely going to be one that I'm going to sell in the shop. It never works that way. I come in here and I'm like, I want to see what this combination of colour does. Right, I'm going to cover this up with a bit of foil. Um... And I'm also going to rinse out the empty bottle and give it a chance to absorb with the heat. Just do that. Um, yeah, I'm going to cover this with a bit of foil. Keep prodding at the yarn. Crinkle time. Right, I'm gonna pause you again and be back in a minute. Oh, curly dokely. Um, I'm just gonna have a look. Let me get some of the thicker gloves. I've got like washing up gloves and they're quite thick, so I can touch the yarn better. Um, these end up quite pastel. I mean, there's places where it's a little bit brighter. It's just sort of this pastelly, greeny. purpley yarn. Um, I mean, I could. It's a bit brighter here where the where there's been less water, so I think that's been a good lesson. And I think I'm definitely going to try this again and film it for you guys. Um, quite like the pastel the pastel feeling of this though I don't think yeah I don't think I want to get add any more colour really I mean it's just going to keep washing off I like this sort of bright pop of blue here just because um, yeah I think 
just move into water, the, the yarn around into water to see what it, it does. Because obviously, while there's still heat, it will just keep sort of reacting, I guess. I don't know whether to try and just push a bit more orange to see how that will react. I might. I will try just a little bit of orange, especially like in, in this area. So. <laughs> I'm just going to put orange everywhere. Um, quite like it. I still wanted it to be like a completely sort of greeny purple. It, it looks quite cute. I quite like it. It's, it's what happens if like a a unicorn or a, a troll grew up on a bit of yarn maybe. This came out really Scottish. <laughs> Tell you what, um yeah. put more here because I folded the yarn up there and then the orange is sort of done as well. It's it's, it's um oh it's not what not I think that's what this is ending up into. Um, a waste not what not version of a come die with me. Ooh, white pot, white pot. Yeah, that cool. Okay, let's go with this with foil again and see how many more times I'm gonna come back and be like, mm, I think I'm done, and then just keep adding color. Righty ho. So I think I am done. I think I'm going to take this out. Um, yeah, take this out of here. And I think this is an exercise we're going to end up repeating definite using a different technique because while we have quite a I mean you can't it all look very different you'll lighten up and you can't see it while we have quite a, a colorful yarn and it's quite pastel and in some places where it was out of the um, out of the water it worked a lot better oh, that's hot. Um, so I think if we want to have a more defined sort of set of colours where you see them better, hand painting on the counter with the colours so that they're more distinct, not sort of overlaying them, but sort of striping them up or, you know, blotching a bit here and a bit there. And maybe they can overlap a little bit, but they're just in distinct parts of the yarn, then that would be okay but and that way it won't get muddied because it you know i'm not gonna lie um I, I i like the colors they're just sort of blending in an interesting way but it you know it, it did get um a little bit muddied and i and every time i stopped to um give it some time i you know i had it in 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 the water under the foil for 10 minutes before I started the video and we flipped the yarn and tried again and it still it still gets muddied and it gets you know mixed up and I think part of that is because when the dye hits the water it spreads regardless of what I do regardless of how much acid I have in here the other issue that we have um is that with fluorescent dyes they they do spread more that's one thing I've learned in the in the times I've used them, and they take longer to set. So, I'm going to stop this, let this dry, um, not dry, cool down. Might just leave it overnight, because it is getting quite late here, and I need to tidy up and clean up um, so that I can make dinner. Well, actually, I'm not making dinner today. Tom's making dinner today, so even nicer. And then I think tomorrow I'm going to come back and we're still going to we're still going to over dye this. Um we're still gonna twist dye it, tie dye it, call it whatever you want. 
um, and dunk it in the black to see what happens because that might actually make it better or it could make it worse it's probably going to make it worse um but we'll see so i will speak to you later so it's the next day and we're going to try and see what we can do with this so this is the yarn that we dyed yesterday in this pot i have 16 cups of water four tablespoons of vinegar and i'm now going to twist this the two skeins that we dyed yesterday and i'm going to drop them in there and there is a gram of um jacquard jet black um i'm going to i'm not going to twist them too hard but i'm also not going to twist them too loose i want quite a bit of resistance so just gotta a twisted skein that will be the drop let's do the dk really quickly i should have probably done this before i turned on the camera but that's okay so the color of the yarn i'm not sure i'm happy with what we did yesterday but um it also does have a bit of a tie-dye feel to it so we'll see how it goes i'm literally just going to drop these in the black i've got hair in my face and um we're going to leave them in here i'm not going to touch them i might just pop them down a little bit so i'm going to put one of them put the second one just gonna use my tongs just to push it back down i'm going to cover this and we're going to leave it for about 20 minutes um, even if there's still some dye left at the end, what I will do then is I've got a yarn mop um, or a dye mop that I'm going to use to absorb any of the extra colour and what we'll do is we'll put the two skeins here in a past insert on top. So um, we'll use up all the dye that's in here, all the pigment and these will then seal in the past insert um, for longer. So I'll be back in 20 minutes to see how this is getting on. I'm just gonna have a quick peek to say that you can see this is this is really dark already. You can sort of see some of the the green and the blue underneath, but it's just doing its thing. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. Um I have a feeling we will be using our our mop to absorb some of the remaining pigment because obviously black is quite pigmented but yeah um it was about it's been about 12, uh, 10 minutes since i actually put the yarn in there so we'll give it another 10 minutes and then we'll come back and uh pull it out probably drop the the yarn mop in there and uh see what happens Okay, let's have a quick look. It has been 20 minutes. Ah, this is really hot. Put this down. I'm just going to take these out. They are very dark. There's, oh, there's almost no pigment left. And this is tangled. Let's just untangle it from the other one. I'm dripping everywhere. see some of the colour peaking so I'm just going to put it in a there is hardly any pigment left in here so I don't actually think I'm going to be using the uh, dye mop at all I think what I might do is just put them back in for another five minutes to see if it will absorb the rest of it um, Oh my god, they keep getting tangled um, in each other. So yeah, let's put them back in really quickly. Give them another, another five minutes. And uh, oh, I have a bit of water. I'll pull them out in a little bit. Right, let's take this out. Let's put this there. 
they've just been sat in the water cooling down a little bit um, I kept them I kept them on for another five minutes yep. it's gonna be really really hot that's okay there and I'll put this there and then we'll move the camera and untangle these and see what's happened there's still a little bit of pigment in the water but um i think black is quite hard to exhaust anyway so we'll just you know we're, we're happy we're happy we're happy with this okay let me move you to a place with nice and light and we'll check this out okay i've moved us to the back door um because it's nice and light although there's a bit of reflection but we don't care okay so it um it snowed in oxfordshire today so it's really really pretty out there um and it's nice to be able to do this and uh look at the snow okay let's do some un untangling just to sort of see what's happened i've got my thicker gloves on even though the iron is i can still feel it's quite hot but it's okay see what we got okay oh wow okay so you can see where it's really quite black but you you can see like it's almost got a glazed feeling in in the sort of more of the center of the yarn and then yeah so this is just very gently glazed and then where we had the proper resist points let me just you still have like the really really bright colors this is really wet as well still so yeah you can you can see it's got it's, it does look like tie dye doesn't it it's kind of cool um let's do the d so this is the sock one let's do the dk as well and see how that's turned out oh the dk's got some really really nice bright pretty spots like right here I quite like that. Oh, this is so hot. <laughs> um, yeah, DK is pretty similar. Like on the inside of the yarn, there's like you can see there's bigger bits where there's been no black or very little black that's gone through. So there's like more of the color left. And then you've got these areas, and I quite it'd be really interesting to see when we when this is dry and we like untwist some of these fibers to see whether there's still the color underneath and there's more glazed sort of feel to it than anything else but i really um as it stands i think i like it but i'd like to see it dry because when it dries it's going to lighten up a little bit as well so we'll see how that goes right i am going to let this core in here it should be quite quite quick considering it is freezing um and then i'm going to dry it um well rinse it wash it dry it and then we'll be back once it is dry to see what the final result is hello me again i hope you enjoyed that and uh here are the two finished skeins so this is definitely not the messy rainbow fluorescent rainbow um over dyed with black that i wanted um i mean you can see let me put that one down there um and open up this skein you do have some color variations but it mostly is just sort of green and yellow so you have mostly the green and the yellow there's the occasional blue spot here and there but um yeah so this is the dk yarn i will put a picture i did a oh there's a bit of blue here can you see it there it is um i did a swatch of the dk one so that you see how it knits up and also how it crochets and um it looks a little bit like a strange version of camouflage um, or at least that's what I think um, I don't know whether you can see there's like a little bit of the pink which is the purple pop 
which is this is literally all that is left um, of the purple pop there's those little flashes of pink and then there's the flashes of blue um, my mistake as I said at the very beginning my mistake was that I was afraid I was afraid of the purple pop color um, I was afraid of um, going bolder and bigger with the fluorescent colors because um, I am aware that they're a little bit diff more difficult to work with they spread more um, and they take a little bit longer for um, the yarn to be absorbed to be absorbed by the yarn um, the other mistake that I think I did is I just dumped all the colors in together I didn't first put in the blue give it five minutes to be fully absorbed by the yarn and then put in the red the pink and the orange and the yellow I just dumped them all in and um, that muddied it you know this is this is this is just muddied um, essentially it's been muted by um, the black as well I think the twisting and over dyeing the skeins the resist over dyeing does actually that bit worked it was what I was already over dyeing that, that wasn't really that good um, what's really interesting is you have some really dark so you can see it here you have some really really dark parts um, of the black and then there's obviously where the resist points were there is little or no color um, or they're just like a toning down of the color if I was to open up the fibers I don't know whether the camera will show it well um, if I move away will it focus no um, so if I, if I open up the fibers um, you can actually see the original color underneath so you can see some blue so the, the the black is more glazed than just completely over dyed and killed any of the other colors um i don't i don't love this yarn but i don't hate it either i i think with the right project this could actually be quite good um and quite pretty um it pulls a little bit um because of the way that um it's dyed the black isn't everywhere on the resist points there are points like on the inside of the yarn as it was twisted where the two insides were touching when I twisted it um, they got very little black and then there's black on the outside so what you're likely to get when you knit it is pulling of the black throughout the project and with the right project that could be absolutely gorgeous um, it does have a tie-dye sort of feel in my head. I don't know whether the camera is quite showing it. Um, I think it's just sort of, you know, these sort of areas where you have like the greens and a little bit of pinks. So this is the DK one that I keep showing. The, um, the sock is not much different. Um, because there's essentially more strands of wool because it's thinner to get to the 100 grams there's a few more variations so you can see there's a bit of sort of purpley going on here and there's like nice almost turquoise tealy sort of green uh, blues um there's some green yellows um let's open this bad boy up yeah so there's a little bit of like pink um almost fuchsia I guess and there's even a little bit of the orange around this area which registers a little bit as pink on the camera I think um, and even though the fibers on the sock are thinner than the DK um, they still have a glaze effect so when you untwist um, the ply you can you can see the original color in most of them um, both yarns are super washed so they've absorbed the color quite quite vividly and the black is is quite nice and dark as you can see I absolutely love this section here where you've got just the, the blue and the black kind of playing around with it and you can see there is um, what I mean by by glazed there's black but you can see the blue underneath the black fibers let me hide my face 
So yeah, um, I'm definitely going to try this again. I'm going to try this again um, with just one color because I have an idea. I have an idea to maybe do a, um, a yarn club for six months based on Zelda. So if you like computer games and you love the Zelda games and think that that would be a fun yarn club to do, then do leave um, a message below and I'll see if there's any interest then maybe I'll, I'll do uh, I'll do that yarn club. If not, I might just do Zelda colorways. I, um, I absolutely love Zelda and so that'd be great. But yeah, I will definitely try try this technique again. Um, with just the two colors, so a bright color and then over dye it, dye it using the twist resist um, with the black, but I do want to try it with the rainbow as well. Um, so stay tuned for a few more videos, um, trying out this technique and trying to figure out how it works best and whether it's actually worth having it in your, in your um, sort of repertoire of um, yarn dyeing techniques. So, Thank you again for joining me for another um, Die With Me video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned from my mistakes. Um, I'm definitely not a proud person, so I'm very happy to put my hand up and say, yeah, I messed up with that one. I, I think I did. Um, please do subscribe, hit the thumbs up, hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss uh, future videos. And I will see you again soon. Bye bye.